Hi, my name is Jonas. Today I'm going to find out if I can make a full track with as only sound source, the Cork MS-20. And I did say only sound source, not only piece of equipment. So I'm going to use Cubase to do some multi-tracking, mixing and processing to make everything come together nicely and make a proper track out of this. Well, let's get to it. As is usual in these videos, let's start with a good kick first. One of the most important parts of this sound is modulating the pitch with the envelope generator one. How can we do this? We take the reverse out of the envelope generator here and we'll feed it into the frequency of the voltage oscillator. This can still be gone. And at that point, you can control the drop of the pitch with the attack here. So. It's a matter of finding the sweet spot. What I also did is have this modulate the filter as well. So it's modulating the frequency. So that is causing the pitch drop and it's modulating the filter here that is causing the cutoff to close down really fast. Then I used quite a big resonance and then it's finding the sweet spot again on the filter. And also the high pass filter is used with a very high resonance to find this sweet spot where it's actually boosting the bass. So you get this resonance peak at the exact right frequency, which is causing the bass to be boosted at that frequency instead of attenuated. Then as a matter of mixing in some more white noise, we can do it like this. Take the white noise, feed it into the VCA here, VC out to the external signal in, and to control that, we connect the control input with the modulation wheel. And we can mix in some noise, not too much. We'll do the snare in two parts. One for the punch and one for the top high, which is a bit more noisy. The punchy part is a little bit similar to the kick. So once again, we'll use the reverse out of the envelope generator one to control the frequency. And then it's a matter of playing with the filters. You need to find a sweet spot where the resonance is kind of giving you this stump. So same with the high pass, by the way, you really need to uh, balance them out. So high resonance and then I used the white noise oscillator, that's the noisy part of course, and then a saw wave, which is pitch modulated by envelope generator one. And that's the sound that's mostly responsible for the punch part of this snare. Now let's do the second snare. That sound is a bit simpler, so we Turn the second oscillator down again, so we will only keep the noise oscillator, then the filter shouldn't be this extreme anymore, so go a bit like this. Also the high pass filter out of the mix now. Can be quite short and snappy. I recorded a snare pattern in Cubase and mixed both snares together and then they will sound like this. And with the kick added in, that's already quite nice. Let's do a hi-hat. Starting from the snare sound we just created, we'll mix in the ring oscillator. and play with the pitch a little bit so you get this metallic sound. Now, let's take off all the low.
And there you have it. It's quite a convincing closed hi-hat. Now let's create a shaker. That's usually quite easy. So it's basically noise. We can take out this ring oscillator again. Just use noise. And then it's a matter of using the attack to give it a little bit of a slight and we're there really easy sound to create the final pure percussive element we'll use for this track is a cowbell because it always needs more cowbell right first we'll use the triangle oscillator and a saw and mix them together let's listen what they So we'll use the triangle on four feet and the saw wave on 16. And then we'll pitch the saw wave to create the second note that you'll always hear in these classic cowbells. Already starts sounding a little bit like the thing we want. As you can see, we're still modulating the pitch with envelope generator one with the reverse out of envelope generator one fed into the voltage controlled oscillator two frequency. And yes, it starts sounding like a legit cowbell. Now let's combine all these percussive elements together. I recorded the patterns in Cubase, bounced them, mixed them a little bit, added compression where it was needed, and then if you play all of this together, we'll get this so far. Now let's add some melodic elements. Starting from the cowbell we just created, we'll take out oscillator 2 again. And then we get this nice percussive bit woodblock like sound and we play this little melody. And throw it into the mix, adding in a little bit of delay. And what you already heard there as well was a short laser burst. These are also quite easy to make on the MS-20. Let's do this. We'll make the filter of the MS-20 self-oscillate. So we'll put the peak on max, and then it's just a matter of finding a sweet spot. Of course, we'll also modulate the filter with envelope generator two. So, and then it's just a matter of finding the frequency we need. If you need a longer one, it's just a matter of playing with the decay. Now let's make a nice bass. We're only going to use the square oscillator, so let's mix it in. Filter resonance quite high. Put the oscillator on 32 feet. It's a matter of finding a sweet spot again using the filter cutoff, the decay and the sustain. That's quite okay, let's put it into Cubase. Now let's start to make the MS-20 really shine. We'll start from the bass we just created and we'll add in a second square oscillator. Well, in this case, the pulse actually, and we tune it 
to introduce the second note. Now it starts sounding like a kind of a chord stab. But it can be cooler. We'll modulate the filter to the max. And now we turn up the attack. Next, I created a lead. It sounds like this. These are two saw oscillators, both on 16 feet. One of them is tuned plus three. Then it's a matter of finding a sweet spot again with the filters. So the high pass filter is at, at around four with a little bit of peak. Uh, the low pass filter is modulated quite heavily again and has a very high peak to create this typical MS-20 screaming like sound. <laughs> Now what you probably already heard is when I play a longer note, a vibrato gets brought in slowly. So how is this done on the MS-20? We'll take the output of the modulation generator, feed it into the VCA. The output of the VCA is modulating the oscillator frequency. And then to control the VCA, we'll use the output of the envelope generator one. This means we can use envelope generator one to control how slowly or how fast the modulation generator starts affecting the pitch. So let's put the settings a little bit more extreme so you can clearly hear what is happening. Now let's go for the real settings. And now we'll increase the attack so it slowly fades in. And that's how you do that sound. Now let's do a second lead. We'll start from the same patch as the first lead, but we'll change up the oscillators. We'll use the square waveform for oscillator one and change the pulse width a little bit and use the pulse for oscillator two. Now we'll open the filter up a little bit more, less resonance. Let's take out the high pass. Let's take off this modulation. We'll keep in the delayed vibrato though. We'll also put oscillator two on eight feet. And add in some portamento, of course. And to have something really cool for the transitions in the track, let's finish this patching session with creating an interesting riser effect. So what shall we do? We're going to use the noise oscillator. We're going to use a ring oscillator, mix them in both. We'll modulate the pitch quite a lot. We're going to put the filter on self resonance and with a quite low frequency. The envelope generator on a max attack a little bit of release and then what we'll do is take the output of envelope generator one and use it to control the VCA. We'll take the output of the LFO but we're using the square, feed it into the VCA and the output of the VCA is routed into total here. So what will this sound like? It will start off as a typical filter sweep. It's a bit like the laser we created first but then in reverse. But then the LFO will fade in as well, modulating both the pitch as the filter. So what will that sound like?
and it stops. Really cool. Doing this kind of creative things on the MS-20 is just a lot of fun. Let's do this again. So this is the point where I usually say, let's put everything together and create a track. And of course that's gonna happen. But first, let's discuss a little bit how I actually do this kind of stuff. So usually my workflow for this kind of track is as follows. I create a patch on the synthesizer. I create a MIDI part. I bounce that MIDI part to audio in Cubase. So I have a nice audio file that I can use as a building block in the track. Usually I record a couple of variations with some filter changes uh, and that kind of things, different notes. So I have a couple of blocks I can choose from. And I repeat this process for every patch until I have all the building blocks I need. And of course at that point, there's also some mixing involved, usually for the beats, certainly in this track, the kick and the snares are going to get some heavy compression. And of course, some reverb and delay are introduced as well. I try not to overdo that processing, but I'm also not going to be a purist about it. Don't forget, this channel is about music creation, so we're going to do everything that is needed to create actual proper music. Now, let's listen to the track. And that was it again for today. Do you want more? Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Bye bye.